It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our ninth annual lecture series, Archaeological Discoveries in Israel. This lecture series is made possible by a generous grant from the Helen Diller Family Foundation, a supporting foundation of the Jewish Community Fund of San Francisco. I'd like to tell you a little about the Antiquity Authority. Uh, it is the preeminent organization in the field of Israeli and biblical archaeology. The IAA is responsible for all matters of archaeology in Israel. It's the custodian of all the national treasures, including nearly two million objects, among them 15,000 Dead Sea Scrolls and some 30,000 archaeological sites throughout Israel. The image on the screen, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, here we go. The image on the screen is a rendering of what will be the national campus for the archaeology of Israel, which we hope you will all come and visit. It is currently being built by the Israeli Antiquity Authority in Jerusalem. Designed by Moses Safdie, the campus will serve as the national center for the research, study, conservation, restoration, housing, curation, publication, just about everything you can think of, illumination of all the archaeological material excavated in Israel. And it'll be the first time that someone will be able to go to one place to study all of these great treasures. The other thing that I want to show you today is the future Ludd Mosaic Center, uh, which will house the um, mosaic that you have all, I hope, already seen or will see after the lecture, and which will be open to the public when it returns to Israel. Uh, we are fortunate today to have two speakers. Here's another uh, idea of what you will see when we have this. Uh, Oh wait, I've got the wrong ones. Archaeological campus. This is the Ludd Mosaic Center, sorry, uh, which will open in about two years. And uh, people will be able to see the Ludd Mosaic reinstalled exactly where it was found. We are fortunate to have two speakers today, both the archaeologist and the conservator of this wonderful Ludd Mosaic, which I was fortunate enough to see in 1996 when it was first discovered and then it was reburied. Uh, it is now on view, as I said, in the Roman and Greek galleries of the Met Museum. Our first speaker is Jacques Niger, who will speak about the Ludd Mosaic from excavation to exhibition. Jacques Niger is head of the Art Conservation Program for the Israel Antiquity Authority specializing in the conservation particularly of mosaics and wall paintings. He received degrees in chemical engineering from the Polytechnic Institute of Sofia, Bulgaria, and worked in the National Institute for Cultural Monuments in Sofia. He came to the IAA in 1993. He teaches at the Technicon and is head of the Scientific Committee for Stone Conservation. Following his talk, we will hear from Miriam Avisar, she is the archaeologist who discovered and worked on the mosaic, and her talk is called The Lud Mosaic Floor and Its Menagerie, Roman Influence on Local Mosaic Art. Born in Germany, she moved to Israel in 1960, studied archaeology and history at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and excavated 10 years with noted Israeli archaeologist Professor Amin ben Tor including places such as Tel Yonim and Beth Chan. She joined the Israel Antiquity Authority in 1992 and then excavated in Akka and Ramla and Jerusalem as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jacques Nigur. Thank you. I will talk about the conservation and a little bit about the people who did this mosaic. Not exactly. The city of Lut exists from the antiquities and changed the name many times. One of the names of this city is Theospolis or Diospolis, the city of God. But today, when we go there, this is a very poor city. Fortunately, in 96, during a uh, salvage excavation, we find this uh, beautiful mosaic. Impossibly, this mosaic will change also the economical 
future of this city. Ex uh, the excavation begins together with the conservation. The conservation team was on site from the first day and cleaning, first aid conservation, and very precise documentation were done. But we didn't see it, the future of this site, and we decided to protect them, to rebury the site, and to wait the day when we can expose this in the proper way. In the same year, 96, we reburied the site, and the site remained like that until uh, 200, 2009, when with uh, the sponsorship of Shelby White and the Le uh, Leon Levy Foundation, we uncovered the site, the mosaic, and we proceed to the cleaning, and you can see the entire mosaic here, and also to see only the small part exposed in the museum. Now we have a scope to clean the mosaic and to prepare the mosaic for lifting. Very difficult and dangerous operation, needing a lot of skills and also manpower. The mosaic was very carefully cleaned. Every stone of the mosaic was cleaned. In square meter, we have around 12,000 stones. We have millions of stones of this inside of this mosaic to clean. But everything was cleaned perfectly, documented, and everyone was possible to observe our, our work online. The camera, the video cameras on site, translated 24 hours what happened in the site. And through the website of the Antiquities Authority, it was possibly, possible to observe what we are doing and con to control us. This was uh, very important also for the local population. Every sensitive material, we have here Glass, te glass tessera, we have here uh, golden uh, glass uh, tessera. Everything was treated properly before the lifting of the mosaic. And the lifting begins. We decide to cut the mosaic in 30 fragments. For so big mosaic, 200 square meters is not so much. But we didn't want it as well to cut through the composition and to have disturbed this beautiful mosaic. Now, the mosaic lifting begins with the gl gluing of fabric on the surface of the mosaic. After that began the very difficult operation to cut the mosaic, first of all, vertically between the lines of the panels, and after that to cut under the mosaic between the layers in order to be possible to detach the fragments. You see our uh, craftsmen's and our instruments, irons and hammers. Unfortunately, other instruments are not existing and we work with them using in our work also a drummer roller in order to flip up the mosaic to have the mosaic face down on wooden supports. In uh, the movies and uh, in, in the slides, this is, uh, looks like a uh, very easy operation, but it's not, because 
the mosaic is heavy and need a lot of attention to not disturb and to not destroy this uh, fragile material. And when the fragments are big, and we have here a 16, 16 uh, square meter fragment uh, weighting one uh, metric ton, this uh, is quite difficult and dangerous. But uh, in all this operation, we succeed with uh, a lot of uh, power and patience to arrive to the lifting of all the panels. You can see here the last operation, the unrolling of the panel from the rower on the wooden support. Now the panel is ready to be transferred to our laboratories. But not all the time was possible to use rowers we, on this very long panel. was necessary to use other technique, the sandwich technique, to have from the both sides of the panel wooden platform and to flip up the panel to have them after the cutting upside down and again ready for transportation. Transportation manually in the big part of the time. We moved this mosaic many times and uh, we are already very strong people. <laughs> After that came the operation of cleaning the mortar from the backing of the mosaic. Again, it's necessary to do very carefully and manually. You see the side like a storage with uh, all the 30 fragments ready for transportation and begin another operation of uh, movers moving uh, heavy things, this time using uh, cranes, but also flying with the mosaics over the walls of the Rockefeller Museum. Not uh, many museums have the facilities to uh, be possible to work with these uh, huge mosaics and to enter, let enter the mosaic inside. Again, this is a very long story of moving heavy things manually. We did this also here in New York. Uh, we, are, we are in the lab for the last cleaning, again, manually. And after the cleaning of the backing of the mosaic, you see the first repuzzling. The mosaic is recombined on the floor of the laboratory to be ready for the fabrication of new supports. And again, we have to play with uh, heavy things this time to put them together, to fix them together, and to be sure we didn't miss or didn't put something upside down, because after that is a no way to change the our mistakes. Now we have for the first time the central part of, of the mosaic and we begin to do the new supports laying layer after layer separation lime uh, mortar layer epoxy layer and the construction of the mosaic for every fragment one construction, aerolam panels with uh, aluminum construction behind. And obviously, again, but I skip this, it's necessary to flip up again the mosaic in order to begin the cleaning 
of the surface from the fabric. We have some happy moments in this uh, time and carefully to clean finally the surface of the mosaic to fix everything together to be ready for transportation this time to the United States. Now, arriving to the mosaic, I want to turn back and to try to explain how we see the execution in the past of the mosaic. All our knowledge is based on the stratigraphy, the used um, materials, and the observed execution techniques. This means how the people are laying stone after stone to produce these uh, beautiful pictures. According to our knowledge and observation, the first phase of uh, the mosaic is the wall northern panel to the right side. This doesn't mean the other part, the down parts of the mosaic were done in very uh, big uh, lap of time. But we are talking here, according again, our calculations, the time to produce this mosaic was around three years. And inside of the three years, we can observe the different phases of uh, execution of the mosaic. First of all, we have the northern panel with the fishes and the ships. We have the hunting sen sense, but I will not explain what is here. I would like to explain how it's done. And the execution is extremely precise. Every stone is put in the precise geometrical place. Every color is used very carefully and in place According to our opinion, here worked a great master of mosaics. You can see the execution, also how these uh, animals are smiling to us, something extremely unusual, and how alive is all this Send in the same time, everything is put in pl place. There is no mistakes in the positions. In, there is no mistakes in the borders. Everything is perfectly calculated. We uh, think in the south part of the mosaic, another master worked. Also a very good master, but let's say, less uh, calculating the distances. Putting the animals somewhere, but after that, because uh, was a great artist, succeeding to combine everything. Not only that, succeeding to combine and to escape from the calculating mistakes in the corners, changing the shape of the pattern. And in the big picture, everything looks perfect. When you look in deep, you see only the difference, the other hand of the other master. And we have the third panel. According to us, this panel in the middle of the composition was executed at the end. Looks like inserted between the two big compositions. But again, the mosaic is laid on entire platform. And this platform was executed before the link. 
of these layers. Here we, we have another master working in other way and using surprisingly a uh, golden glass uh, tessera and a lot of uh, gold uh, glass tessera. Also the length, the layout of uh, the tessera is not precise, is uh, also artistic but uh, more rough if I can use this word, the result is uh, fantastic, beautiful. But again, this is a other person, possibly working with, in team with others together, possibly some time after them, but in the same period of time. Now, how the mosaic is built? the classical way building mosaics is visible here. We have a layer of big stones called statumen, a layer of very strong mortar called rudus, a layer of uh, mortar called nucleus, when on this mortar, sometime preparatory design, design was laid using sharp instruments or simply painting. And on this, in, on very thin layer of lime mortar, they laid the stone of the mosaic. What we have in Lut, we have perfectly arranged statumen two layers of river stones and cut stones, perfectly levelate on this, the layer of the rudus, nucleus, and the salatum, like in the book. And really, this mosaic is like a book. It's necessary only to open the book and to read. In the antiquities, they cut the tesser in this way today, we do the same. This is uh, Ostia, second century AD, and today. In the antiquities, we know from one uh, edict of uh, the Emperor Diocletianus, the team doing mosaics was uh, built from a uh, head of team Pictor Imaginarius. This uh, guy was also the manager of the team, talking with uh, the owner of the houses, deciding each uh, pattern to use, what to be in the composition of the mosaic, and doing small project in scale. After that come the very important person of the Pictor Parietarius, this uh, person was a very skilled geometer, calculating the house, the floor, and doing a project one-to-one -one of the mosaic, and sometime tracing on the mosaic mortar the lines guiding the mosaic. This uh, person also called the workers doing mosaic, the calcis coctor, the person doing the line, the pavimentarius, mixing the mortar and applying the different level of mortar, and the tessellarius and pictor mosearius, the people laying out the mosaic. Now, in Lut, the Pictor Pariotarius did an underpaint under the fish panel, and we find the trace of the painting, and we succeed as well to conserve the plaster with the traces of the paint. This is the exact position of the paint under the mosaic. 
in the long panel with uh, the birds and the crater, the pit clock periotarius traced with sharp instrument the moving line of the wine leaves to direct the length of the tessera. In the same time, lines, guiding lines were incised in the fresh mortar to mark the guiding lines of length of the mosaic panels. And at the end, these are the people and the footprints of the mosaic masters on the fresh mortar during the execution of the mosaic. We have a 43 number, this should be 11 American standard, <laughs> and 36, I'm not sure what this should be, with sandals. But we have many footprints of the people going on the fresh mortar and working. And not only this, right side down, we have four digits of a man working on the mosaic. And we have the left side, the traces of the throw wheel on the fresh mortar. Again, this mosaic is like a book. We have inside everything is necessary only to read. During the last campaign, we rediscovered as well another mosaic. This mosaic was known from the excavation in 96, but this time we succeeded to get the entire picture. This means we have a complex with two huge mosaics and uh, something uh, more important. We have a complex with a mosaic from la the late Roman period, period and a mosaic, this mosaic from the early Byzantine period. As uh, this means we have a very complicated life for the future because we should try to expose this uh, fantastic site to the public in the best possible way. This is the site with the mosaics and we see this is a city, living city with the roads, with the housing, with uh, the poor people living in the surrounding and we think with the building of uh, conservation center with activities explaining what is conservation, what's excavation, with activities for the children and the schools to change the future of this uh, quarter or the entire city and to give them not only the past but also the future. But it's time for other things. Thank you for your attention.